This video will provide an introduction to the Salona Network Planner for CBRS and private LTE networks. The key criteria for wireless coverage and capacity planning of CBRS networks include facility geolocation based on address or GPS coordinates to determine spectrum availability from the spectrum access system. Understanding the facility type and coverage area desired for the network and determining the number of devices, application characteristics, and ultimate capacity required for the network. The Salona Network Planner includes the following key features. Determination of geographic location to design for a specific physical location, again, based on address or GPS coordinates. Understanding the square footage requirements for indoor coverage, or drawing on a map the outdoor area for outdoor coverage requirements. Spectrum access system integration, including SAS inquiry in real time to determine the available spectrum in the CBRS band at the specific location being designed for. What if analysis modeling to understand spectrum changes and how that impacts ultimate capacity requirements and E-Node B quantity. Interference modeling for private LTE frequency reuse the Salona CBRS Network Planner also includes sophisticated modeling based on discrete event network simulation and regress regression modeling. This takes into account facility and topology requirements, including attenuation values and RF path loss characteristics, RF link modeling, and capacity requirements based on client devices spread throughout the coverage area. The Salona CBRS Network Planner is a web-based tool. Let's take a look at a few sample scenarios for both indoor and outdoor environments. First, let's model an indoor environment. We'll put in our address. And upon putting in the address, the first thing we will notice is that an inquiry into the spectrum access system has occurred for that specific location showing us the spectrum availability in the CBRS band. At this particular location, we have all 150 megahertz available. Next, let's select a facility type, which includes pre-computed modeling for attenuation and path loss characteristics of different facility environments. Let's assume this one is a warehouse environment. Next, for indoor areas, we want to put in the square footage desired for coverage. This warehouse is approximately 500,000 square feet. Next, we see an initial estimate of the a number of E node Bs required to cover this indoor space. With all 150 megahertz available, we would need 22 indoor E node Bs in order to support this environment of 500,000 square feet. This is from a purely coverage-based perspective at this point. Next, let's model capacity. We can input the number of devices, for instance, 500 devices, and the application type and bandwidth characteristics that each device should be able to maintain concurrently on the network. Let's assume each device requires 3 megabits down and 1 megabit up. You can see no change at this point to our E node B count based on that capacity plan. Let's assume we have a few more devices in our environment. And they require a little bit more bandwidth. Now, with 1,000 devices, 5 megabits down and 3 megabits uplink for each one, we require 51 indoor E node Bs to serve this. Next, let's take a look at an outdoor environment. Again, we'll put in the address to be designed for. A spectrum access inquiry has occurred, indicating again that we have all 150 megahertz available at this location. Next, let's select an outdoor type of environment, perhaps a shipping port. We'll zoom out a little bit on the map to 
get a better perspective of a large outdoor area. Here we can see this might be a rail yard. Instead of putting in the square footage, let's go ahead and choose this on the map to determine our coverage area. Simply click around to encompass the area desired for coverage. And here we can see we've selected a little over 4 million square feet, and it would require 12 outdoor E-node Bs to cover that area. The difference in E-node B count from indoor to outdoor reflects the differences in directional antennas, as well as higher output transmit power and EIRP based on FCC limits. At this point, we have a coverage-based design for this outdoor area. Let's add in some capacity requirements as well. Let's model 200 outdoor devices. And let's say they're doing some video bandwidth applications that may require 10 meg down and 2 meg up. We can see here the capacity requirements there have very little impact on the overall E node B count. Let's get a little bit, little bit more aggressive and say maybe most of this video bandwidth is uplink rather than downlink. Let's go 2 meg downlink and 10 meg uplink. Now we can see with much higher bandwidth uplink, we require an increased amount of E-node Bs in an outdoor environment to serve that bandwidth. Let's take a look at the what-if analysis modeling and interference modeling as well, built into the CBRS Network Planner tool. Instead of assuming we have all 150 megahertz available, we can perform a more conservative analysis. Perhaps if there we want to plan for the worst case scenario where all of the priority access licenses are taken in this area. Up to 70 megahertz of PAL licenses can be taken in any given county. Let's assume we're using GAA and that priority access licenses have been granted for 70 megahertz worth of the spectrum. You can see as we reduce the amount of spectrum, the E node B account has increased slightly based on if we had all 150 megahertz. This is due to intercell interference and ultimate capacity modeling within the system to take that into account. Because of private LTE's ability for frequency reuse on the same channel, we are able to get by with just a few more E-node Bs, even though we have only 80 megahertz out of the entire 150. The CBRS Network Planner can scale E-Node B requirements based on the available spectrum. It takes into account capacity requirements that are modeled for client devices and LTE intercell interference coordination modeling based on the required frequency reuse. So how much spectrum should you plan for in a CBRS network? The band itself is 150 megahertz wide, and that is the best case scenario. We feel that 110 megahertz will be realistic for most locations. A conservative value is 80 megahertz, assuming all priority ac access licenses have been granted and also actively deployed in a given area. If you are planning for a dynamic protection area for incumbent access as well, for instance, around Navy radar areas along the coasts or fixed satellite systems inland, those typically use at most five megahertz of spectrum and may reduce your overall spectrum one channel less. Based on 10 megahertz channel width, that would reduce it from 80 megahertz down to 70 megahertz for a conservative value. Here's another example of the CBRS network planner and scaling of E node B requirements. This example assumes 10 million square feet of outdoor area 5,000 clients requiring 6 meg down and 3 meg up, 60% duty cycle, and 20 megahertz channels. You can see from the best case to the realistic case, we only require 3% more E node Bs, again, because of LTE's frequency reuse and intercell interference coordination capabilities. We can reuse those channels more often, and capacity requirements only require a few more E node Bs. Going from best case, to more conservative use cases with priority access licenses being deployed, we only require 9% more E-node Bs. 
And in the worst case scenario, in a dynamic protection area, we only require 13% more ENODs than the best case scenario. Thank you for watching this introductory video on the Salona CBRS Network Planner.